and study coming at you with a Borderlands 3 Zane build video um, before we get into the build just a couple notes I'd like to make about me and why I'm doing this I am NOT a YouTube content creator I am NOT trying to carve out my YouTube niche I don't need you to rate comment or subscribe what I am interested in is contributing to the Borderlands 3 community in a positive way uh, in particular Borderlands 3, more than any of the Borderlands game, is leading into the concept of build diversity. And, uh, you know, a lot of the content that I've been consuming recently about Borderlands uh, seem to miss that point. And, you know, there are a couple people out there that I follow that I think are, are doing a good job of trying to talk about builds, talk about numbers, talk about how things work, such as uh, Dirch, uh, his Dirchlands channel, and Demonite, you know, so it's not really uh, entertainment, it's more informational, so if you're looking for uh, entertainment, there are a lot of content out there for that, but if you're more, you know, into geeking out on the, the, the gear and the build possibilities, then maybe I will be able to contribute something useful to you, and I would also encourage you to do your own builds using the gear that you have, trying to find synergies that work for your play style and the gear that you have. And, uh, you know, I, I just repeated the gear that you have thing. And the reason for that is because my approach to, uh, to build crafting is a gear centric approach. There's so much gear in this game and a lot of it's in the general loot pool. So being able to get a specific item to do a specific build can be difficult so I just find it as a practical matter easier to just try to utilize what I find in the most efficient way possible that I can and um, so that's what I'm gonna be doing in this video so what happened with me was I got a Maggie uh, not too long ago a couple weeks and then the same day I got it I put it in the bank because it sucked ass and then a couple days later, uh, Gearbox released a, a, a hot fix or a micro patch or whatever it was that they released where they buffed the Maggie. And so I took it out of the vault and I started playing with it and it was amazing. And so I've been kind of crafting and tweaking a Maggie build since then. And then yesterday, I got this class mod. And so what we're going to be going over today is where I am now with my build. Uh, with this particular variant of it, you know, so again, my approach is gear first, but I'm also uh, Take the approach of encounter So I, I try to design a build for the encounter that I intend to do for my play session and in this build I'm going to take it into the circle of slaughter uh, I'm sorry the slaughter shaft circle of slaughter and so this build is geared towards that specific activity and again, I think that's kind of the point with Borderlands 3 is to craft these different kind of builds. And it's not just one build to rule them all. Uh, so, you know, a, a lot of YouTubers are kind of pushing that meta that, you know, you, you got your God role and that's all you need. And it's, I think it's a really bad idea. Case in point, you know, all the people pushing the, the grenade spam Moe's who just got screwed by the bug that got introduced in the latest... Uh, patch where it broke the build so if that's the only thing you had then you just got screwed out of your mo's but if you are more or like me and others who are more flexible and like changing our builds and spend a lot of time at the new use station respecking um, then you're gonna be okay no matter what happens because you'll just make adjustments okay so enough preaching let's get into the build so we're going to start with the gear because, again, it's a gear-centric approach. This is not the best Maggie possible. It has no um, anointments. And the point is you don't really... You know, anointments make things better, but they may not be absolutely necessary for a build. So if you can deal with build flexibility then and you're using Zane, uh, you can make almost anything work. So we're going to use a, a standard no special ability Maggie and we're gonna make it work and you'll notice also that it's the only gun I have here I'm kind of being tongue-in-cheek because I'm gonna run circle with it and I'm gonna show you that you only need one gun with this build it's it's really powerful 
uh, for that activity. It's not the it's not a God rule bill or anything like that that you can take anything on. It, that's not what I'm trying to say. Uh, we're just crafting a bill to deal with that activity given the gear that we have. Okay. Um, so if you notice the Magri has 33% accuracy, that is its weakness. So that's shotgun range, people, 33%. That's, that's shotgun and even in some case worse than some shotguns, but that's okay. We have a fix for that uh, in this build. Next up, this build depends on the Big Boom Blaster for its 60% chance to drop boosters that restore shields and grenade. That's going to be a thing in this build. We are going to be using grenades a lot. It's a grenade spam build. So this is what I'm saying. I, this is not a cookie cutter build. All the builds that you see out there, or most of the builds that you see out there, are the cryo builds are you running two, uh, two action skills at the same time. We're not going to be doing that with this build. We're going to be running one action skill, and we're going to be using your Maggie. Uh, and a big part of that is going to be the big boom blaster. Now, the weakness of the Big Boom Blaster is its capacity of 3,807, which is really minuscule, but Zane has a skill for that. Uh, now, the reason this build exists in the form that it does is because I got this, uh, this Executor class mod um, yesterday, and I have another Executor class mod that is Jacob-centric, where it boosts Jacob critical hit damage and then it does reload speed. So that's what I was running until I found this. And what makes this one special is that it has 31% pistol damage. So not only are we getting uh, critical damage bonus for 45% for Jacobs, but now that's on top of a base increase of 31%. And the special perk of the Executor includes critical hit damage. So that's two sources of crit buffs uh, for Zane. And th that's the one thing Zane doesn't have in his skill tree is crit bonuses. He has a lot of stuff for boosting base damage, but not a lot for boosting crit. So anytime you get a class mod that increases crit, you know, you want to try to make that work for you because that's going to boost your DPS uh, significantly. Uh, next up, we have the Icebreaker Spider Gun Relic. It's not the best relic for what I'd like. I would love to have a Icebreaker Victory Relic, uh, especially for Circle of Slaughter because there's so many badasses there. So that's just, um, it'd be perfect. So if you guys have one of those and you want to trade with me, um, I'm Studugian Epic uh, PC. So, you know, you can send a friend request and I'll happily trade with you. Um, but this is what we have, and you do want a uh, icebreaker because it boosts, gives us a uh, damage increase against frozen enemies of 35% and a cryo efficiency of 50%. Uh, the niceties here is the increase to max health and the increase to magazine size because the Maggie comes with, I think, nine. Yeah, nine. So that 40% increase is going to make a big difference, and we're going to uh, leverage that. Uh, ignite chance, we're not doing anything with elementals or with fire here, so it's not really helping us. Shotgun, again, not really helping us. Um, another important part of this is going to be this recurring hex, merv, uh, grenade, and cryo. Uh, the other ones I have is a recurring hex in um, radiation and uh, stormfront. We're not going to be using the stormfront at all for the slaughter shaft run but we will be using the hex for the uh, the radiation hex for the slaughter shaft run this is because this is how we deal with anointed um the anointed are immune to cryo as you probably already know so we need something else uh to help us deal with them and that's where this comes in so that's it for the gear now let's get into the build so we're only going to be using one skill, like I said. We're going to be spamming grenades, so we're only going to be using one action skill at a time. Uh, so the first five points, we're going to put an adrenaline because of that action skill cooldown in case. And sometimes it will go down. It's just sometimes RNG is not good, and it goes down. So uh, being able to get 
our action skill back up quickly is crucial, so that's why we're putting five points here. We're going to put three points here because of the Big Boom Blaster's low capacity, so we're giving it an additional 30%. It's not going to be a huge increase, but it will be enough so we can take a couple hits from badass rockets before our shield breaks and takes us down. We're not going to put any points here because we are going to be depending on the Big Boom Blaster's um, dropping those boosters to re restore the shield, so we don't need recharge delay or recharge rate, we're just going to be picking up um, boosters to get our shields back. Uh, now of course with any cryo build you need brain freeze because that's the kind of centerpiece, especially with the Maggie because it's not cryo, we don't have the anointed one that gives us cryo, we just have a plain old Maggie. But uh, the way the Maggie works and it the way the Maggie interacts with brain freeze is really really good because the Maggie is a multi pellet weapon and so we pull the trigger once we shoot one round but it has six pellets in it so that's six hits to the dome when you land that crit which is which synergizes beautifully with the brain freeze to proc it very very frequently Next up, we have Stiff Upper Lip for damage reduction. Now, the reason why we're picking Stiff Upper Lip is because it's going to pair well with Futility Belt, which we're going to pick. All right, so Futility Belt, once we've killed something, uh, it turns into a skill skill, and it gives us, you know, 15% damage reduction. So 15% here and 16% here, that's 31% damage reduction. So that also synergizes well with the fact that we have a low capacity shield, so the damage done to our shield would be less than it otherwise would. Huh, too many woods. Um, we're skipping this completely because it's just useless because we're going to be getting our shields back all the time. We're going to put a point here because we might as well get the damage buff. Um, and this is how we address the accuracy issue with the Maggie. So we're going to increase our accuracy by 33% which is going to really tighten up that spread so uh, if you go back in the video and you you know what I should just show you what that looks like Again, I'm not a professional youtuber so there's not going to be any fancy edits that make things look nice I'm just doing this off the cuff as it happens so uh, bear with me here so I'm just going to get away from that stupid animal making noise in my ear Okay, so that's the default cone of accuracy, right? So anywhere in there, you shoot, you see it's all over the place, okay? So, once again, before, one point in here, after. Look at that. Nice, tight spread. And it's going to get even better. So we just fixed the Maggie, right? So we turned it from a shotgun into a hand cannon, and then we're going to keep going, and we're going to turn it from a hand cannon into a sniper rifle. So uh, next up, we're putting a point in a really expensive jacket. This is going to help us deal with the dots, so you can think about it as a uh, another damage reduction skill. And of course, futility belt. So, um, with our low capacity shield, damage reduction makes a difference. Now, we need I need to get to the bottom of this tree because this the capstone synergizes really well with the big boom blaster. Where and when the caps when the sh the barrier takes damage, it procs the um, uh, the big boom blaster effect in that it drops boosters so we're going to having we're going to be having a ton of boosters all over the place and we don't have to wait for our barrier to go down or something to get through a barrier to keep our shields up so we need to get down here and the only place useful at this particular point to spend a point is here again we don't need it here because we're going to be using the boosters to get our shield back we don't need it here because our shields aren't going to stay down long so this is really our only choice even though it's a really crappy skill uh, Gearbox has talked about um, doing a pass through the build, through the, the skill trees and buffing certain things, and I hope this is one of the skills that they do buff at some point in the future. But for right now, we just need something to get us down the tree. 
So this is going to be our primary source of healing because we are going to be freezing things. So this is how we get our health back if we do suffer any damage. So we need a full three points here. And this is the second half to any cryo builds. The first half, of course, is brain, brain freeze. And the second half is calm, cool, collected because this is how we keep our action skill going. Now, this skill right here is something that I seem to be one of the few people choosing, or at least from some of the content that I've seen. No one chooses the skill, but I'm going to because this is how you turn the Maggie into a sniper rifle. So this is where we are now, which is pretty good. You let the stack build and just watch as the stack goes up, the cone gets tighter and tighter. And when we get to a good a full 15 stacks, um, it's it's damn near a sniper rifle. Look at that. So the reason why and the other thing about this that a lot of people overlook is the handling. So it controls recoil. So not only does it increase our accuracy, it also controls the recoil. And that becomes important when you're trying to get a second wind. Um, you know, not having the uh, the cursor or the critical all the reticle all over the place, and being able to get that nice headshot is going to be kind of crucial. So, plus it gets us where we want to get to, which is the capstone. So here we go, and um, that's it for the undercover tree. Uh, next up, we're going to be doing violent speed. I just like the movement speed because a lot of times, especially when you're doing starter shaft, you need to run away. Do not make the mistake of thinking that you need a god roll build and you can just tank all the damage coming at you. I forgot to put the uh, the augments in. So of course we got to do the dome all rounder. And me personally, I always choose uh, deterrence field when I'm mobbing. If I'm doing a boss battle or something, then I'll use retaliation for that extra 10% damage buff. But this only works when the um, when the barrier is stationary. If you pick it up, you do not get that 10% damage buff. So a lot of people are running around with barriers thinking they have 10% damage buff, but they do not. So this is the more effective option. Plus, it stuns enemies. So you've got one of those hardened badasses just spamming rockets at you. You can just run right up to them. And with this equipped, it will stop them and stun them, and they will not be shooting rockets at you. And it also keeps all the melee enemies, um, for the most part, out of your dome. Some of their attack animations make it so that they'll still get in, but this will keep most of them out. Okay, so back to this. This is just violent movement speed. I'm sorry, violent speed. It's, it's a movement speed buff, and um, I like it a lot because it allows me to run away. I, I mean, uh, <coughs> strategically retreat. That, yeah, that's it, strategically retreat. Now, we need this really really bad because the maggie only has nine rounds in it uh, it's going to be boosted up to 12 because of our relic but 12 rounds is not a lot so reload speed is dps next and the final thing right for now at least is death follows close this is probably my favorite skill in any borderlands game in any character tree because it's just how it works it's just a flat bonus in duration and whatever your kill skill bonus is it just buffs it so it's it's just a really cool concept as far as skills go and it's only one point at that i think that's just really cool i like it a lot okay so let's go to the double agent tree of course we need synchronicity and donny brook and donny brook synergizes as well with death follows close because it's going to boost the DPS, it's going to boost the damage that Donnybrook provides, and it's going to boost um, the duration of Donnybrook. So uh, these two are really good together. So now we have one point, and the only useful place I can think to spend it is here, because this is also a kill skill. So again, the synergy between Death Follows Close and all your kill skills, meaning even though it's only one point and it's 2%, on its own it's only 2%, but when paired with death follows close it's 27 percent right so that's nothing to sneeze at so that's it for the uh the loadout part of this um we're just going to be spamming grenades and because we're wearing the big boom blaster and because we've gone all the way down to a distributed denial the our shield is going to keep us basically with give us infinite grenades 
right? So they talk about infinite grenade Mose. Well, this is infinite grenade um, Zane. So that's it for the build portion. Um, I'm going to go do the circle of slaughter. I'm going to record the whole thing, but I'll probably just include in this video the uh, the second and the final wave. If you guys are interested in the the full thing, let me know. I'll I'll, I'll upload it. Otherwise, uh, this will be the second and final, and I will see you guys in part two of the video.